going over IRS Form 8911, Alternative Fuel Vehicle Refueling Property Credit. This is one of the tax credits that was extended uh, in December of 2022, thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. It's been extended uh, for property placed in service after 2021 and before tax year 2033. You'll use this form to figure your credit for alternative fuel vehicle re refueling property that you placed into service during the tax year. Now you'll see in this form, we've already pre-filled some information. We're, we're going to make these assumptions as if uh, we're taking a credit for property that was placed into use in tax year 2022, although the rules slightly change for tax years 2023 and beyond, and I'll be sure to point those differences out as we go through the video. One, a couple of things to note. Uh, in the IRS form instructions on the IRS website, it states which revision to use. Then the IRS guidance is to use the December 2022 revision of this form for tax years beginning in 2022 or later until a later revision is issued. As you can see, this is the January 2023 uh, version. And when I looked through the archives on the IRS website, I did not find a December 2022 version. I, you, I found a January 2022 version, which is now considered to be obsolete. So we'll we use uh, the January 2023 edition for this walkthrough. Qualified alternative fuel vehicle refueling property. This is considered to be any property used for either of the following purposes. One, to store or dispense an alternative fuel other than electricity into the fuel tank of a motor vehicle propelled by the fuel, but only if the storage or dispensing is at the point where the fuel is delivered into that tank. And then two, to recharge an electric vehicle, but only if the recharging property is located at the point where the vehicle is recharged. There are additional requirements that must be met to qualify for the credit. Uh, one, you place the refueling property in service during your tax year. Two, the original use of the property began with you as the taxpayer. Three, the property is not used predominantly outside the United States. Four, if the property is not business or investment use property, it must be un installed on property used as your main home or primary residence. And five, property placed in service after 2022 must be located in an eligible census tract. For this purpose, an eligible census tract is any population census tract that is described in section 45D, subsection E, or is not an urban area. Urban areas are designated by the Secretary of Commerce. If at some point the property no longer qualifies for the tax credit, you may have to recapture part or all of the credit. Uh, more information is uh, located in section 30C, sub, subsection E, uh, 5. Uh, at the top of the form, we'll begin going through the form. As you can see, there are three parts. Uh, part 1 is the total cost of refueling property. Part 2 is the credit for the business and investment use of part of this property. And then part 3 is the tax credit for personal use. So we will... Um, make the assumption that you spent $30,000 total on qualified uh, refueling property. Uh, let's imagine that you installed a charging station. So in part one contains the total cost and we'll make this assumption that this is fully qualified. In part two, we'll break out 
the amount of this property that was uh, designated for business and investment use. And, and for simplicity's sake, I simply uh, took part of this $30,000 and then the rest of it will be covered in part three. It could be two separate investments. Um, so in part two, uh, uh, the total business and investment use part in part three, if you took a section 179 expense deduction, uh, you would annotate that in line three. Uh, for this purpose, we'll just assume zero uh, for that uh, deduction. And then you'll subtract the difference uh, to come up with the answer in 4A. In 4B, you would enter any amount that's included on line 4A attributable to property placed in service after 2022 as part of a project subject to project requirements that were not met. We'll assume zero for that, uh, but if for some reason you think that this might be uh, of concern, there is an additional information specifically on wage and apprenticeship requirements uh, in the form instructions. 4C uh, simply is the difference between 4A and 4B, uh, so we bring the $20,000 down to 4C. In line 5A, we'll multiply the number in line 4B by 6%. 6% of 0 is 0. Multiply uh, In line 5B, we'll multiply 4C by 30%. 30% of $20,000 is $6,000. And then we'll uh, add those lines together, uh, lines 5A and 5B, which results in $6,000. Uh, we'll carry this number down to line six. Um, if you uh, place refueling property with uh, business and investment use before 2023, but all the property placed uh, in service at any one location would result in not more than $30,000, then you would include the number from line 5C into both line six and seven. However, if this number were to exceed $30,000, then you would have to enter $30,000, as that is the maximum business and investment use credit that you can take in a given tax year. Line 8, we'll assume that there is no uh, alternative fuel vehicle refueling property credit from partnerships uh, or S corporations, but if there were, you would enter that here, and then you would combine them to uh, arrive at the business and investment use part of this tax credit that you would enter under your Schedule K-1 uh, for partnerships and S corporations and then all other taxpayers would uh, uh, report this on Form 3800 uh, which is the General Business Credit uh, Form uh, Part 3 Line 1S. In Part 3 you'll see that this $10,000 is the difference between line one, $30,000, and line two, $20,000. Um, if this number is zero, obviously uh, you do not need to file this form unless you're claiming a credit uh, for the business and investment use part of this property. In line 11, you take the amount that you brought into line 10 and multiply it by 30%. and uh, in line 12, as, as stated previously for line 6 and 7, uh, the maximum personal use part of the credit is $1,000. Uh, so you would enter this here, uh, or if the number on line 11 was less than $1,000, then you would enter that here. Uh, so uh, you, since $1,000 is the maximum credit that you can take, you enter $1,000 in both line 12 and 13. And it's important to note that the maximum tax credit for individuals did not change uh, either in 2022 or 2023 and beyond. The maximum tax credit for individuals for personal use property is $1,000. Uh, I uh, did not uh, mention that in 2000, 
22, the maximum business uh, investment use credit that you can put on line six is $30,000 uh, for 2023 and beyond, it's $100,000. For line 14, uh, regular tax before credits, this is a number that you would bring in from your 1040, uh, line 16, and schedule two. Um, all other filers, you would enter the regular tax uh, before the credits on your return. For simplicity's sake, we'll assume that your tax liability from line 16 was $20,000. This is a random number. Your uh, tax liability will probably be different. In line 15, uh, we uh, have to calculate tax credits that uh, reduce this tax amount uh, before uh, the refueling property credit. So uh, foreign tax credit goes into line 15A. For line 15B, um, there are uh, more information is contained in the uh, form instructions about the certain allowable credits that you would obtain from Schedule 3, um, lines 2 through 5 and 7. Uh, so you combine those and you come up with, uh, in this example, $500. We would subtract the $500 from the $20,000 to arrive at the net regular tax on line 16, which is $19,500. We have to compare this to the tentative minimum tax, which for most individuals would be on your Form, AM, uh, form 6251, the alternative minimum tax form, line 9, if you are required to file it. Other filers may have to find it from your AMT form or schedule. And then we subtract line 17 from line 16. So uh, at the very least, you're paying $15,000 uh, in this situation, but your actual tax bill is $19,500 leaving a difference of $4,500. Uh, if this difference is zero, then uh, that means that your uh, tax bill is um, the same or less than your AMT, which means you cannot take this credit. Uh, um, or at least you cannot, yes, you cannot take this credit unless you are claiming a credit on line nine. So. Uh, if you went through all of this and your AMT precludes you from taking the per personal use part of this tax credit, then you do not file this form unless you have a business investment use credit. Um, that is not the case here. Here we simply enter the smaller of line 13 up here or the smaller of line 18, which if this was a different calculation, let's just say your AMT was 1900 and then that reduced this to 500 then this would make this a $500 tax credit uh, instead of the $1,000 that is the maximum allowable. You can find the, uh, if you need step-by-step -step guidance on completing this tax form, you can find the article that we wrote on our website. Simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS Form 8911 in the search bar, and you should see our article. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have questions, comments, concerns, observations, uh, please post them in the comments or send me an email. As always, thank you very much.